These are the top eight things that you need to know from this year's air show. It's always so exciting to have news from the world of aviation, and this year's air show at Farnbro is no exception, with billion dollar orders, new aircraft, and new exciting interior concepts. So let's deep dive into my picks for the best news items from the world of aviation. Boeing didn't bring anything new to this air show. You see, Boeing is currently wrestling with the fact that its 777X and its 737 MAX 10s are delayed, so these prototype aircraft are absent. This also goes with ongoing challenges with the American manufacturer, including an incident earlier this year where an Alaska Airlines Boeing 737 MAX door blew open. And this is actually the first air show since Dubai. Boeing is not showcasing their 777 X. Boeing has also started moving engineers away from the X-66A aircraft project, where they're developing a new plane with NASA, to more, more engineers on their 737 MAX program and their 777Xs, which are actually quite delayed. But this didn't stop airlines from being very interested in it. Korean Air boosts their Boeing order with 20 777X aircraft and 30 787 Dreamliner aircraft on the first day of the Farnborough International Air Show. This was a significant boost for Boeing by Korean Air ordering up to 50 new twin aisle aircraft. And this order is special because it's actually the first time that Korean Air has ordered the 777X showing more support to this new aircraft. There were also those additional options for another 10 787s, as well as the original 20 that they've now got on order. The first deliveries are expected by 2028, and this aircraft will feature a new seat design upon entering the market. But they weren't the only ones that made orders with Boeing. Qatar Airways expanded its own Boeing 777X with 20 more aircraft. They added 20 777-9 aircraft to its fleet backlog, and this addition comes as Boeing continues to secure orders for other twin aisle aircraft. And speaking of Qatar, there is actually two new business class seat designs that are coming to the market, with Qatar Airways introducing its next generation of its fabulously famous business class product, the Q Suite, at this year's air show. Called the Q Suite Next Gen, the enhancements include a fully customizable quad suite, companion suites in window aisles, 4K OLED maneuverable in-flight TV screens, which is apparently a first for the industry, although I hardly think that there's much 4K uh, content that can be played, as well as an increased space and privacy in each suite. And of course, these screens can be repositioned to the side to create the largest social productivity space in the sky, with up to four passengers in the quad suite and up to two passengers in the companion suite. Not only that, but there's now a new lockable storage drawer which requires a digital pin code to unlock, which I don't think is gonna go as well as everybody thinks. I'm pretty sure some people are gonna forget their code. And also with Qatar, can we talk about that fact the uh, first class needs to be upgraded as well? Come on. Turkish Airlines also revealed its new business class seat at the prestigious air show, but this one is not as spectacular as Qatar's. The Turkish Airlines new business class concept offers to strengthen the carrier's luxury positioning in the region, amid intense competition from high-end rivals. Called the Crystal Business Class Suite, travelers will make future journeys in style. The new suite is the first from Turkish Airlines to feature an adjustable suite door and a privacy panel for in-flight privacy. The suites will also offer adjustable ambient and reading lights, universal Type-C power outlets, and a wireless charger, a noise cancellation audio jack, as well as an adjustable mirror and closed storage on an ergonomical seat. It also has a 22 inch entertainment screen, although no, uh, although we don't know if it's 4K or not. The airline has also announced that it will provide free Wi-Fi to all passengers by the end of 2025, and many of these features will start with its new Airbus A350s that are on order. So pretty good from Turkish Airlines to remain competitive, but it remains to be seen how they go. But speaking of the Airbus A350, Boeing wasn't the only one 
to get new orders at the air show. Abra Group actually expanded its international long-haul fleet with a memorandum of understanding for five Airbus A350s-900. You may know these guys as the power players behind GOL Linhas Arianas and also Avianca. This agreement will enhance the group's international connectivity and we'll be able to see these brand new Airbus A350s flying into many destinations in Europe and also North America, although I wish they would fly here to Australia. The announcement was also made at the end of day four of the Fernabon Air Show, where we also saw a memorandum understanding and quite a big one for 75 more Airbus A320 Neos and 15 Airbus A330s. The Saudi Arabian based low cost carrier Fly NAS decided to go big or go home with this large order. This move aims to expand the airline's capacity and extend its route network from just within that region. Because of these long haul aircraft, we'll probably see some flights flying between Southeast Asia and Europe, especially for the Muslim market. But they weren't the only airline to also order Airbuses. We also saw Vietjet sign a $7.4 billion deal for 20 Airbus A330 Neos, which gets me excited because the Airbus A330 Neo is one of my favorite aircraft in the world. I even went back in the day to a uh, sort of launch event of one of these aircraft. So I've always been fabulously in love with this design. It's uh, quite good and quite competitive against the 787 Dreamliner. But this deal for these 20 aircraft will really push Vietjet into the international space. And it seems like that I'm not the only person sharing the love of the Airbus A330 Neo because Virgin Atlantic also ordered seven of them as part of their fleet transformation. But it's not the only new thing. Embraer has actually said that their brand new E2 aircraft can now automate their own takeoff. By increasing the range from challenging airports, Embraer has unveiled an automatic takeoff system for its E2 passenger jets, aiming to enhance the aircraft's range capabilities. This new system is expected to increase the jet's range by approximately 350 nautical miles from short runways and other difficult areas. This is a great improvement, but I wonder how many airlines will actually use the automatic takeoff system. Speaking of Embraer, they finally showed us their new cargo plane. These new e-jet freighters are designed to meet the growing demands of e-commerce and modern trade, which required fast deliveries and decentralized operations. These are much smaller jets than the bigger, say, 777 freighters that we've seen Qatar order at the show, so this is really quite interesting. Embraer is offering an unmatched cargo economics and flexibility with these right size jets. That's the term they're using, right size. The full freighter conversion will be available for all pre-owned E-190s and E-195 aircraft with the service entry expected by early 2024. So they've already got one of these aircraft good to go, but they expect up to 700 aircraft for this size over the next 20 years. And this makes a lot of sense because you've got areas like uh, say a Greek island that can't take the large cargo planes but obviously have a huge demand for air freight. Currently the small narrow body freighter airframes are aged, inefficient, highly polluting and nearing retirement. This transformation of commerce and trade and logistics will lead to the unprecedented demand for air freight especially for same day deliveries say for example in Europe and America, and those decentralized operations, which is ideal for E-Jet sized freighters. And also this is pretty good for airlines that own the E-Jets because it will extend their life by another 10 to 15 years and encourage for a replacement with more efficient, sustainable and quieter aircraft. And honestly, it looks pretty damn good. And lastly, the eighth item of news is that the Zero Avia continues to make waves. After making two significant announcements over the last couple of days, Zero Avia, which is developing a hydrogen electric solution for the commercial aviation market, announced a new partnership with KLM 
on day three. These two companies plan to build a aircraft that can run on hydrogen and use it on a demonstration flight using the ZA2000 hydrogen electric engine for a large regional turboprop aircraft and do a demonstration flight between two airports by 2026, which is actually coming up very fast. And I can see turboprop aircraft really embracing this solution because it just makes a lot of sense to use this type of power source for these smaller regional flights. And those are the top items that I have seen at this year's Farnborough Air Show. We've got some great big orders. We saw some new technology like automatically taking off planes. And of course, I love a good new business class seat. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Is there anything major that I missed? Is there anything that you wish that had happened? And what are your predictions of what happens next in the world of aviation?